There's a category of weapons that, that uh, are referred to as semi-autonomous, which means that um, a human being uh, gives uh, an order that a particular target should be hit or a particular person should be killed, and then sends the weapon out to go and do that, and perhaps the weapon determines the time, place, and manner um, when, that, uh, when that happens. That's actually the Terminator. And under Paul's directive, the Terminator, DOD could actually have the Terminator. And that's not subject to an additional layer of view. Is that correct? Well, um, <laughs> let's say there's a couple of complications there, right? This is an interagency discussion. Uh, the, the Terminator, right? And the, I don't, I'm not going to spoil anything here to say that the Terminator in the first movie, in the first movie in the first kills movie. a lot of people that are not his actual target. Um, so probably that would not be true with that caveat. Yeah. But the idea of, of <laughs> but, but 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 setting that aside, it's semi-autonomous. This summer, hundreds, thousands of scientists and technologists join, joined in an open letter, warning against the development and use, the dangers of the development and use of autonomous weapons. They said that without proper regulation, that these sort of weapons could trigger a new arms race. Um, Autonomous weapons can be made extremely cheaply and extreme and in very, very large numbers, in the millions. Uh, and you can direct a force of millions of autonomous weapons with just a few people, uh, which is not the case. If I want to field millions of soldiers, I need tens of millions of support personnel, uh, entire industries to keep them going, uh, and so on. So it's a very, very different situation.